Smile on your way till you see it, amen. God is an amazing God. Yes, I'm starting a new summer series, amen, for the month of June, and I'll be uh, tagging this particular topic all June, and it simply is from ordinary to legendary. From ordinary to legendary, part one. And then the little subtext says, when there's a legend living inside of you, you can live a legendary life. And I want to go back to the Genesis 7 and 1. My focus is this month, the month of June, to help you understand that there is a power that lives inside of you. If you haven't read my book, please read it. If you haven't gotten it, please get it. Because that book has some great wisdom and insight that reminds you that you're not just a human being. You're not just a regular woman or regular man, especially when you come in contact with God. There's a power inside of you that I believe is just waiting to be released, waiting to take you to the next level. And when we look at Genesis 7 and 1, there's a lot in here, and I'll just take a few things from it. It says, then the Lord said to Noah, he said to Noah, go into the ark and don't go by yourself, but I want you to take your whole entire family. And Noah must have been thinking, why? Because then God says this, because I have found you righteous in this generation. Remember this, God is attracted to those that live counterculture. God is attracted to those that live counterculture. Add that to your vocabulary. Somebody say counter culture. Now somebody say, Pastor, what does that mean? Simply, it means counterculture means somebody that doesn't do what everybody else is doing. Somebody that has the strength and the fortitude to be strong enough to be different, but not just different just to be different, but different by God's design. See, Noah got chosen by God, not because he was like everybody else, but he was chosen by God because he was living differently from everybody else. And if you want to be legendary, when I talk about being legendary, I'm talking about being somebody that long after you're gone, people will still be talking about your name, talking about the impact that you made, talking about the difference that you made. I don't know about you, but I think about what's going to be said at my funeral. I am obsessed with it. I think about it all the time. What is my funeral going to be like? What is going to be said? Because you, like me, have been to far too many funerals where somebody had to lie for somebody that had died. You don't want to clap because maybe you got up for you with your two minutes and you lied talking about how amazing somebody was and how great somebody it wasn't then Tammy folks got the nerve to put people in heaven come on somebody you can't put nobody in heaven you can't put nobody in hell the life you live is gonna speak for you and I know we come to church on Sunday morning but there's got to be more than just coming to church on Sunday morning working a nine-to-five being tired eating and then doing it all over again you are here to live a legendary life you are here to make an impact you are here to make a difference wherever you go. And I don't care if you come from an ordinary family. God says you can go from ordinary to being legendary. How? You got to be like Noah. You got to live differently from everybody else. God is attracted to those who are counterculture. Am I counterculture? Absolutely. Are you counterculture? Think to yourself. When the world goes left, do you go right? Do you have the courage to buck the trend? Do you have the courage to start a trend? Okay. Where are my trendsetters? Man, I, I grew up in a day and age, man, where, where, where there were a group of us, man, that we thrived on being trendsetters. We thrived on standing out. But see, when your mind is weak, you can't stand what comes with standing out. When your mind is weak, you can't stand when somebody looks at you and they turn their nose up. Listen, I want you to look at me and turn your nose up because I know that I am successful in being different yeah. instead of blending in. Yeah. You were not born to blend in and some of you just need to recognize you ain't gonna never fit in. Preach, Pastor Troy. You ain't gonna never. Let me, let me just break this down for some of y'all. Some of you ain't gonna never fit in your own family. And I know you got the same last name, same blood, same DNA, same birth. You can quit trying to fit in. Why don't you just do you? And watch how you become legendary in your own family. The Bible says God spoke to Noah. And I'm going to tell you something. God ain't speaking to everybody. Four lying talking about God talking to everybody. God ain't talking to everybody. Because God's not going to cast his pearls before swines. You have to qualify for God to talk to you. Noah lived a righteous life. And let me break this down for you. Righteous doesn't mean you do right all the time. Help them, Holy Ghost. Because if you follow the story of Noah, after he gets in the ark and gets his family in the ark and take all the animals in the ark, guess what he does after it's all over? He gets drunk. 
Hold your seat. That means you can have flaws and still be legendary. See, some of, some, of, some of you don't even try anymore because you have so many mistakes. You messed up. No, you can have flaws and still be legendary. Here's what God blessed me to see. Even though Noah might have got drunk, watch this. He obeyed God when it mattered most. I wish somebody could grab that. Somebody, somebody really needs to grab that. He, let me say that again. He obeyed God when it mattered most. What would have happened if he had not gone into the ark? What would have happened if he had not built the ark? And you got to know when God's given you an opportunity and it's one of those moments where you need to say yes. It's one of those moments where this is not one of those times where I can say no or I have an option and I still survive. There are critical moments in your life where God will give you directions and instructions. And if you don't obey him, not only are you going to perish, but everybody else that's dependent on you is going to perish. God is attracted to those who do what? Live. Can I go deeper? How we live is proof of what we believe. I'm going to teach today. Somebody say, how I live is proof of what we believe. How many of you know that's the truth? If you look at the word believe, I believe there are two things in the word believe that give us great wisdom. Be and live, if you take the E out. How you be will determine how you live. And what you believe will determine what you will be and how you live. And I'm not talking about the talk game. I'm talking about the actions that back up what you say you believe. See, I believe God is able. I believe God is my all. I believe that God will supply all of my needs. So I live in a way that says God is what I believe he is. When you don't have faith, you don't move forward. Ooh, that's it. That's, that's good. I got to say that again. When you don't have faith, you don't move forward. But when you got faith, you get out of a boat that doesn't have a hole in it, and you'll attempt to do something that nobody else wants to do. Why? Because you're counter culture. Moses was counter culture. Guy had a felony, had killed somebody. And normally when you kill somebody, you run until you get caught. You don't go back to the place where you committed the crime. Come on, that's counter culture. God said, I'm looking for people to be counterculture. Jesus was counterculture. He came in and he had more issues with the church than he did with the streets. Can I bless you with something? When God really gets in, in your life and you really become counterculture for Christ and you're really on a track to be legendary, you're not going to have a lot of problems with the world. You're going to have a lot of problems with the church. Nobody teaches us that. Now, I'm not going to have any problems with the church. Yes, you are because religion it's very dominant in our culture today. Religion is very dominant where people are judged based on how they look and people are judged based on how they dress. Religion is very dominant. Well, we're not a religious church. This church has nothing to do with religion. I hope you know that. We hate religion in this church. Oh, pastor, you shouldn't say that. God did not tell me to be religious. Come on, somebody. God told me to be holy. He said, be ye holy for I am holy. Well, what is religion? Religion is man's attempt to try to control people. Religion is man's attempt to try to make us all get in a box. I can't get in no box. I was in a box and I was in a box with some musty people and I decided to get out. Come on, somebody. And some of you need to recognize that God has called you to be legendary. And I'm going to preach this this whole month. Somebody going to catch this. Somebody going to recognize that you are the one that God has chosen in your family to be a trendsetter. Amen. Somebody's going to recognize that you're the one that God has chosen in your family to be the first to do what nobody else has ever done in your family. Amen. Maybe go to college. Maybe buy your own car. Maybe buy your own house. Maybe do something that the rest of your family has never done. Here's how you know God has pegged you to be legendary. When you look at yourself and you look at your family, you're like, okay, one of these things does not belong. Do I have a church in here today? Maybe, maybe it's just five of y'all. Maybe, maybe it's 10. Okay, I see 15. Do I have anybody can say, yeah, when I look at myself and I look at my family, I wonder, oh, is that really my mama? Is that really my daddy? Oh, come on, come on, somebody. I got some cousins that I refuse to believe are really my cousins. I'm sorry. I just, I can't wrap my mind around it. Am I the only one? You know some of them. <laughs> Pastor, that's cruel. That's cold. No, that's honest. No slant on them, but you got to recognize that just because you are related doesn't mean that you are a slave. See, so a lot of you are a slave to your family construct. We're the Johnson's family. We've been in the project our whole life. We're the Smith family. None of us have ever gone to college. Some of y'all are who am I preaching to? Amen. 
And any time you try to break out, they try to break you down. Amen. I am talking to somebody very specific right now. Who every time you cast a dream, your family tells you why you can't do it. I'm, I'm gonna break it, they're gonna break you down. Every time you say, I wanna go to college, I wanna buy my own house, I wanna, I wanna own this, they tell you a hundred reasons why you can't. You gotta understand something. God has called you to be legendary, but listen, you can't be legendary when you're connected to people who are ordinary. Good God Almighty. I gotta say that one more time, because that's just right off the cuff. You can't be legendary when you're connected with people who are ordinary. Amen. And sometimes we just gotta go through life and say, you know what, ordinary. Ordinary, ordinary, ordinary. I'm gonna have to put you to the side. Don't mean I don't love you, but I cannot fly with you attached to me. Amen. The Bible says it this way, lay, lay aside every weight, man, I like my own sermon, and every sin that does so easily beset you. Pastor, why would I want to be legendary? Let me tell you something, there are advantages when you allow God to make you legendary. Amen. Why does God want me to be legendary? Because God wants the world to see that God is still powerful. People doubt whether or not God is real. I had a conversation with one of my brothers. You can't tell me God's not real. You can't tell me Jesus is not a way maker. When I look at my life and how it continues to unfold and how I continue to advance, you can't tell me that tithing doesn't work. I'm sorry. It may not be working for you. I, I apologize. You can't tell me that giving doesn't work. You can't tell me that forgiving your enemies doesn't work because when I do these things, God says, go ahead and take a quantum leap. And I'm passing people. Watch this. I'm passing people who are older than me, smarter than me, and have more than I do. You don't have to clap for me. I can clap for myself. It's cool. But you're tethered and tied to ordinary people. Somebody say, I got to let the ordinary people go. Say, I am called to be legendary. Bible says, the Lord said, here we go again. I'm going to set a pattern for you. The Lord said, now he's talking to who? Abram. He says, Abram, listen to me, doc, listen to me. Go from your country. God, this will preach on so many levels. Go from your country. Leave your people. Oh, I just got through talking about that. Leave your people. Listen, leave your father's household and go to a land. Peep this. That I will show you. See, you'll never be legendary if God can't guide you without giving you full disclosure of every step you got to take. See, God looks for people who will step and not even know where they're going. Amen. Somebody say, that way. Yeah. yeah, that's what God says. God, where you want me to go? God says, that way. You go one more step, God says, what you want me to do? He said, keep going, that way. And some of you will not let God use you because you require too much data, too much information up front. God don't work like that. Do I have anybody that ever stepped out on faith and God gave you a little bit of information and he kept giving you a little bit of information? He was like, God, quit tripping. Won't you tell me everything I got to face? He knows if he tells you everything you got to face, you will not face it. Amen. So what God does, he gets you to take a little step and he keeps saying, go that way. And if you trust him long enough, he'll get you to your destination. And verse two says, listen what God says to Abram. I will make you, watch this, legendary. I will make you, you, one man, one man, don't tell me one man can't make a difference. I will make you into a great nation. I can see Abram getting excited. Me, a great nation? See, here's why Abram's excited. Abram is nobody. I wish I had four folks that read the Bible at least once. He's nobody in Genesis 12. He's a nothing. He's a no name brand dude. He's just somebody in the universe and God looks down and starts conversing with him. By the time we meet Abraham, he's 75 years old at our introduction of him. For 74 years, he's nothing. 74 years, God doesn't talk to him. Don't you tell me you're too old to be great. Don't you tell me you're too old to accomplish your dreams. Don't you tell me it's too late. God didn't talk to Abraham till he was 75. This excites me. He says, I will make you. That, that word make is a powerful word, y'all. See, what make means is you ain't got nothing to work with. The word make means you don't qualify. You can't assist me. You're nobody. And God says, don't worry about it because I'm going to make you with my power something you could never be in your own power. Peep this. Then it goes deeper. He said, not only am I going to make you a great nation, God says, I will bless you. Now, see, I, I would have had to shout. Somebody would have had to hold my mule. 
I'm 75. I ain't got nothing. I ain't got a, you know, that thing to, to do. I ain't, you know, I ain't got a window to throw it out. I ain't got nothing. And I know everybody got something. Y'all sitting there like y'all got everything. And if some of y'all ain't got nothing. Done work 50 years and ain't got nothing. Done work 80 years on a job and ain't got nothing. I came to give you hope. You can have nothing one day and have everything. Good God of mine, I'm getting too happy. I'm getting too happy, Mother Allah. I'm getting too happy today. One day you can have nothing. And the next day, you can have something. I call it the spiritual lottery. I wish I had a church. I wish I, I, wish I had a church. I'm talking about pick five. Hey Amen. Y'all ain't ready. Pick five scriptures and live by them. Amen. Okay, y'all don't like that context. God said, I'll bless you. Woo. I thought that would have been enough, but boy, God goes on. That's, that's why it's El Shaddai. Yeah. I wish I had time to teach you the names of God. El Shaddai is one of the many names of God because it's a very descriptive name. That it describes God as the one who is able to supply all the needs of everybody that needs anything at the same time. Right. You got to have it when you can supply everybody's needs. God says, speak this, I'm gonna make your name great. See, some of y'all got a pushback on this message when you heard the title, Legendary. You look up the word legendary, it means one who is famous. Amen. One who is well known. You know, some of you are too smart for your own good. Well, God ain't called us to be legendary. God ain't called us to be famous. God says, I will make your name great. Not Jesus, not the angels. God says, if you ride with me, I'll make your name great. When they say your name, it will have honor. When they say your name, people will respect it. But even if you're in the projects, God will say, let me put a little swag on your name. Amen, somebody? Amen. Okay, no, nobody know what I'm talking about. God can make your name great. God can make your name great even though your credit ain't great. God Almighty. I know seven of y'all better say amen. amen. I know seven of y'all better testify because you know you got a credit score of 239. Amen. But when God make your name great, watch this. This is how you know God make you great. Your credit store, score don't stop you from getting stuff. Can I, can, I, can I get somebody that know what I'm talking about? And you be like, how did I get this? How did I get that? How did I get this? It wasn't number God. Yeah. If he can do it for one, he'll do it for all of us. But you've got to understand God wants to make you legendary because he wants to make you an inspiration to an entire nation. Yeah. It's hard to inspire somebody when you ain't got nothing. Yeah. This is the problem with the modern day church. We talk Jesus. Yeah. We talk blessings. We talk favor. And then folk be looking to about, where that though? And then you be talking about, well, my pastor got it. Right. <laughs> that other place got it. God wants you to have your own personal testimony and your own personal evidence so that people aren't just convicted. People are convinced when they look at your life. Folks ought to be able to know who you were five years ago and see a tremendous difference five years later. Hold your seat, love me if you can. Something's wrong if you're connected with Jesus and you're in the same place five years later. You're not going to clap, but you got to receive it. You're not going to clap because you want to blame the government and blame your mama and your daddy. When you hook up with God, he's a game changer. So I make your name great. Oh God, it gets better. He said, then watch this, you will be a hot mess. No, let, me, let me check that out again. You will be a blessing. Yes. See that? See how quiet? See, yes. see, very few people shouted on that. Yes. Very few people shouted on that because your mindset is you want to receive the blessing. Yes. Notice how? Very, notice how very few people even responded on the you will be a blessing because that means you're going to have to give away what God gave you. You're going to have to sacrifice what God has blessed you with. See, I have figured it out. The more I give, the more God gives me. The more I sow, the more I grow. So I am a conduit. God, you can get it to me because, boy, you can show get it through me. When God says give, I give. I don't hesitate because he's got it all. Can I go deeper? It gets better. See, this is what I'm talking about, about being legendary. Verse 3 say, I will bless those. I'm, I'm, I got I to slow down. Yeah. I'm going to bless those who bless you. Yeah. Can I tell you why people don't bless you? You ain't going to like it, but it'll help you. Can I tell you why people don't bless you? 
People don't bless you because when they do, they don't get a blessing in return. Amen. You're not going to clap, but you need to hear it. Amen. It's hard to stop blessing somebody when you've discovered every time I bless them, I get a blessing back. You say, oh, this person right here is good ground. This person is good soil. And I told you, we are not all the same. There are people that are good soil. There are people that you can sow into and you will get a blessing back. Me and him are talking about business. That's why if you run a business, you got to recognize all money is not good money. Let me help you. Let me help you. I, I have multiple streams of income. I run several businesses. All money is not good money because there's some people will nickel and dime you to death. You'll do all the work and then they won't pay you. They want to pay you next week. Some folks, you got to say, you know what? You are not worth my investment because when I bless you, I don't get a blessing in return. I live by a simple principle that has blessed my life exponentially. I under promise and I over deliver. I'm going to clap for myself. Some of you business people need to write that down. Some of you business folks that are trying to succeed in life, you need to figure out how you can, because y'all make big promises. Mm -hmm. But then you under deliver and you wonder why you don't get repeat business. You wonder why you don't get repeat blessings. If your income tax check is the highlight of your blessing experience, something wrong, church. You ain't gonna clap, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. It's cool. We happened to get an income tax uh, return this year, got one last year. It was a generous one. You know what I did with it? Gave it to my wife. I said, you take this, do whatever you want to do with it, your, money, your play money. So ain't nobody clapped over here. <laughs> ain't no, ain't no, you did what? I'm talking about several thousand. I said, take this, let's play money. You had that, I don't need that. See, some of y'all got to understand that you got what you need to be blessed. But you got to learn how to be the blessing. You got to learn how to say, God, use me to change somebody's life. There ain't a day that don't go by that I'm not a blessing somewhere to somebody. One of the things I love to do is when I go out to eat, now I'm giving you tips on how to be legendary. I love to do this. When I go out to eat, I love to buy people's meals. I love it. I do it all, I do it all the time. I'll go and sit in the restaurant. I'll be looking for different people, different families, different vibe. We was at a restaurant yesterday and I saw this white couple who had a black little girl and they had a Mexican little girl. And I, I kept watching them and, and the mother was so loving to the black girl. Black girl's hair was braided up nice and right too. <laughs> Oh, come on, somebody. I'm looking. I said, a white woman had a black girl and a Mexican girl. And her husband was there. And I watched how she interact with the black girl and the Mexican girl. I have never seen so much love, so much care. The little black girl got out of her, got out of, out of her chair. You know how children do, they want to run around. And then I saw the real mother say, girl, you better get back in that chair. And that girl got back in that chair. I said, oh, all right now, white girl, you got it. You got it. When we got ready to leave, I told the waitress, I said, bring me, see what you got to learn how to do. Some of you, some of you get your blessing because you're telling everybody what you're doing. Help them. I'm trying to get you to another level. So you'll never be legendary if you broadcast all your activities. You'll never be legendary if you make more announcements than you do advancements. I told you, wealthy people don't do a whole lot of announcements. I'm finna do this. I'm finna do this. I'm finna do this. And then six months later, you still ain't done it. Just do it and then they'll recognize, oh, you're trying to be legendary. I said, bring me their bill. She brought me the bill. I paid for theirs, paid for mine, and I paid their tip. Amen. No, no, they got to do their own tip. See, that's why you can't be blessed. And I gave, I gave their waitress a generous tip. Took care of my waitress. Got ready to walk out of the door. I'm walking out of the door. I hand the guy his bill in the little leather flap thing. He looks up, he says, thank you, because he thinks I work there. So he thinks I'm handing, I say, you're welcome, and I walk right out of the door. I say, hurry up, Tish, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, before they figure out what just happened. Why are you telling us this, Pastor? Because I am on a path to be legendary. But Pastor, they don't know your name, they don't know what you did, but God does. Okay, let me, let me, let me put it out here for you. Either you're gonna be legendary, or you're gonna be ordinary. Ain't no in between. And some of y'all have been ordinary far too long. Have you ever met amazing people? Amen. 
and you cannot figure out why they are not further along in life. I'm just going, can I be real for two minutes? Some of y'all, love me if you can. You, they, they're very talented, they're very gifted, they're very eloquent, but they, they seem to be like they're on a leash and they can't seem to really go far in life. And you're like, what, what, what's wrong with this person? What's going on with this individual? It's a mindset. Because you got you to gotta live like you a legend before you become a legend. You got to walk a certain way. Okay, let me bless you, and I'm going to bless you and be done when my time is up. If you act it, you will attract it. Somebody need to get that. Somebody need to get that. Wait a minute, wait, 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 what you mean, Pastor? Let me tell you how God has wired the universe. God has wired the universe to such a degree that the way that you act dictates what you attract. Okay, some of y'all need a scripture. So as a man thinketh in his heart, Amen. so is he. Notice it doesn't say so as a man is. The Bible says, if a man starts to think in his heart, I am wealthy. I am wealthy. When, with no money in his pocket, I'm wealthy. Well, if I'm wealthy, I, I need to straighten up. If I'm wealthy, I need to walk a certain way. If I'm wealthy, I need to talk a certain way. See, if you act it, you'll attract it. Amen. Okay, that's all right. Yeah. One scripture says it this way. He who finds a wife, mm -hmm, finds a good thing. Can I bless you? I'm talking about being legendary. Wait a minute, how is it that he that finds a wife finds a good thing when he finds a wife, she's not a wife? Somebody will get it. Somebody going to latch on to it. She's not a wife. She's single, ready to mingle. But because she's acting like a wife. I wish I had a church in here today. Some of you could get married a whole lot quicker if you quit acting like a hoe and start acting like a wife. There you go. I bet that wake you up. I bet that gets your attention. Mm -hmm. You woke up then, didn't you? Yeah, well, he sat up then. I'll say it again because I want, I want to make sure you understand me. And I'm talking to men and women. Because there's some hoish men out here too. You single and you want to be married because I told you real men want to be married. Real men want a wife. You ain't going to clap now. Real men know that a woman is the key to his next level. That she's to help me. Come on, real men, where you at? You, you desire that. Real women want to be a wife. Yeah. I ain't never seen so many bone thugs in harmonism. <laughs> women don't even want to be married. No, women want to be men. They want to run things. You got to know how to be strong, but know how to be soft. Yeah. We all know women run the world. Yeah. Come on, that's Beyonce 5 and 7. Read your Bible. Yeah. Who run the world? Y'all in. Y'all come out with somebody to read the Bible. Yeah. Everybody know women run the world. But it's a woman that's smart enough to let a man think he's running the world. That gets to run the world. He who finds a wife finds a good thing. But when he finds her, she's not a wife. But she's acting it so she can. How, how many of y'all hear me today? Really, seriously. Somebody said, I got to start acting it. You have what you've attracted. You ain't going to clap. I'll clap for you. You have what you've attracted. Well, you say, I don't want it. Then, then act differently. <laughs> see, if you'll change the way you act, you'll change what you attract in life. Okay, that's all right. That's all right. Some of us are attracting the things we want because we refuse to go back down to that low-level thinking. I don't live in a low-level thinking place. I live in a high-level thinking place. People call me high-maintenance. People call me bougie. I tell them, thank you. What a compliment. You bougie. You, you always got to have the best. That's what people say about me. You always got to have the best. You don't know how to eat no $5 meal. Thank you. Thank you. What you don't know is I grew up on Spam. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. What you don't know is I done ate more bologna than all y'all put the gap up in here. So excuse me if I start acquiring a different kind of taste for a different kind of life. Excuse me if I start acting like I'm healthy, acting like I'm wealthy, acting like I'm blessed. Even if I'm in a mess, I'm going to act it so I can't attract it. Who am I talking to that's got to change your act? Y'all know y'all some good actors. Denzel ain't got nothing on y'all. But you acting wrong. Somebody say, I want to be legendary. Man, I hope y'all getting this. I'm blessing myself and I don't bless nobody else. God said, I'm going to bless those who bless you. And here's the part I like. That's why y'all can't mess with God's people. 
You better keep your mouth off of God's people. I'm going to teach y'all because some of y'all going to bust hell wide open. Not because you do any kind of sin that you call sin. Some of y'all going to bust hell wide open because you always got something to say about God's people. And God didn't put in his word. Touch not my anointed. Do it. Don't do my prophet no harm. Some of y'all better keep y'all mouth off of God's people. If you don't like me, the best thing you can do is shut the front door. That's the best thing for you to do is to go somewhere, shut the front door. My well shut the back door too. Because the minute you open your mouth, God says, okay, see, you done messed up now because that's my boy. You done messed up now because that's my daughter. You done messed up now because that's my child. You ain't got to worry about your enemies. When God has called you to be legendary, God will fight your battles. Do I have anybody that has, that has had the blessings of watching God fight your battles for you? Sometimes you got to get your own family. Lord. And they be trying to figure out why things be going wrong. I said, because you did me wrong. That's why things going wrong. <laughs> you got to let them know later. Say, oh, that's why things going wrong. Amen. You did me wrong. Yeah. See, some of y'all don't like this. Yeah. The Bible said, whoever, I like my Bible, boy. Whoever cursed you. Whoever put their mouth on you. Whoever try to bring you down. Whoever tell you you ain't going to make it. God said, don't worry about it. God says, I got it. I will personally. Curse them. 